Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Durecki. This video is going to review the specific steps required to perform an arthroscopic labral repair of the shoulder. We are going to start by looking at a right shoulder. If we look at the right shoulder, the shoulder is made up of a ball and the socket. As we discussed in the office previously, the labrum is a rim of cartilage that goes around the socket. So when we look at this surgery in our surgical animation, the computer is going to remove the ball so that all we see is the socket. So this is the socket now. The socket is the end portion of your shoulder blade. So you can see the shoulder blade back behind the socket. The socket, of course, is covered with articular cartilage, which is the soft, rubbery stuff on the end of a chicken bone. If you break open a chicken bone and you see that glistening articular cartilage, but there's a specific type of cartilage called the labral cartilage that lines the rim of the socket all the way around the socket. Because the socket of the shoulder is relatively shallow compared to the large diameter of the ball, there is not a lot of constraint to the shoulder joint provided by the bone of the socket itself. And so one of the structures that helps to keep the ball centered in the socket is this rim of cartilage called the labrum. This cartilage is like the cartilage in your ear. It is soft and it can be damaged or tear. So in this particular shoulder, this is the front of the shoulder, this is the back of the shoulder, and we access the shoulder through a series of cannulas or portals that we then bring in a camera so that we can watch the procedure. And this camera is being brought in from the back of the shoulder and we are looking at a labral tear extending from the mid aspect of the front of the socket all the way down near the bottom of the socket. And again, this means that all of this tissue right here is no longer attached to the bone and it's loose and can be flapping around. This leads to pain, clicking, catching, and in some instances, recurrent instability episodes. A unique feature of the upper portion of the labrum is that this is the biceps tendon as it comes and attaches onto the superior aspect of the labrum up at the top of the socket. On occasion, you can have an extension of your labral tear that involves this portion of the labrum up near the top of the socket. If that is the case, we often talk about moving the biceps tendon and reattaching the biceps over on the ball so that the biceps tendon isn't pulling on this upper or superior portion of the labrum. However, we only move the biceps or address the biceps tendon if the tear involves this area. Otherwise, we proceed with a traditional labral repair. So in order to perform an arthroscopic labral repair, we will initially roughen up the bone on the undersurface of this torn labrum so as to create bleeding that will then help to stimulate the healing of the labrum back down to the bone. We will then go in with a drill guide and drill a 1.8 millimeter hole into the bone. After drilling the hole, we place the implant. The implant is malleted into the bone, and this is what we call an all-suture implant, meaning that there's no metal or plastic in this implant to keep this implant down and into the bone. Once the implant is in, we set it by pulling it backwards. We then simply remove a rubber grommet that holds the sutures and then remove the insertion device. From here, we pass a single limb of the suture up and around the adjacent labral tissue 
and then simply tie the tissue down to the bone. As you can see, as we tie a knot, it compresses the tissue against the bone and it's that compression that we are gaining with the repair that's going to help to stimulate the healing. The excess suture is then cut and removed. We can then move up the front of the labrum if there are additional areas of tearing until all areas of the tear are completely affixed back to the bone. Finally, and not specifically demonstrated in this surgical animation, we had previously discussed in the clinic that in addition to performing a traditional labor repair, on occasion we also have to do what's called a capsular plication. The capsule actually attaches around the edge of the labrum and continues on over to the ball. If I felt that the capsule was also stretched out, in addition to placing the stitches around the labrum, I would also take a bite of capsule with that stitch so that as we tighten it down, not only are we compressing the labral tissue back down against the bone, but we are also plicating the capsule and tightening up the wall in the front of this shoulder in order to reduce the volume and reduce the risk of recurrent instability episodes. I would like to thank Arthrex for providing the implants necessary to perform an arthroscopic label repair. I would also like to thank Arthrex for providing the surgical animation used in this video. I hope this video has helped you to better visualize and understand exactly how we perform arthroscopic label repairs. Have a good day.